JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week March the 14th until March the 18th. I am Harlan Bospisuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we enter another week uh, with the globe keeping its uh, gaze uh, locked on the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. However, market participants will also pay extra attention to the FOMC and uh, Bank of England uh, monetary policy decisions uh, this week. While rate hikes are widely anticipated by both uh, banks, investors will be eager to get updated information with regards to their future plans. Canada's CPIs for February and Australia's employment report for the same month are also due to be released. Now, let's take uh, things uh, from the beginning and in more detail. Today, there are no major data releases or, or events uh, scheduled on the economic agenda. However, that doesn't mean that a quiet uh, trading day is guaranteed. For another week, investors will be... Investors will be biting their nails on how the crisis between Russia and Ukraine will develop. The latest updates uh, suggest uh, the latest updates suggest that both nations are willing to return to the negotiating table. But once again, this is far from suggesting uh, that common ground could be found soon. Remember, we had talks uh, last week as well, but they quickly fell apart. The conflict the conflict continues, and thus, with regards to the broader market sentiment we maintain the view that the risks remain tilted to the downside. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asian session, we get the minutes from the latest RBA meeting. At that meeting, the bank kept its policy tools untouched as expected, while in the accompanying statement, officials maintained uh, their commitment to keep supportive monetary, monetary conditions, repeating that they will not increase rates until actual inflation is sustainably within the 2-3% to target range. They also added that the war in Ukraine is a major source of uncertainty, leaving no room for, for participants to accelerate their tightening expectations, at least at that time. However, fears of accelerating inflation around the globe allowed bets over multiple hikes this year to stay well on the table. According to the ASX Interbank Cash Rate Futures Yield Curve, investors expect the RBA to hike um, to 0.25% around June, while they see the official cash rate exceeding 1.25% by the end of the year. Therefore, with all that in mind, we will dig into the, into the minutes for clues and hints as to when policymakers are, are planning to hit the hike button, and how many more liftoffs could do we see before uh, the end of the year? Anything pointing to a cautious approach may bring the Aussie under some uh, selling interest, but we expect Thursday's employment report to prove a bigger market mover, as it will be a more updated information, which could, uh, which could shape expectations much better. Now, from China, we have the industrial production, retail sales, and fixed asset investment all for the month of uh, February. Industrial production is expected to have slowed somewhat to 4% from 4.3%, uh, while retail sales are forecast to have accelerated to 3% from 1.7% year over year. The fixed asset investment rate is seen uh, ticking up to 5% year over year from 4.9%. Now, during the early European session, we get the UK employment report for January, while a few hours later, Germany's ZEW survey for March and Eurozone's industrial production for January are due to be released. 
With regards to the UK report, the unemployment rate is expected to have ticked down to 4% from uh, 4.1%, while the employment change is expected to show that the economy has lost 65,000 jobs after losing 38,000 in December. Average weekly earnings, including bonuses, are forecast to have accelerated, while the excluding bonuses rate is forecast to have hit steady. Now, as far as the German survey is concerned, both the current conditions and expectations indices are forecast to have declined notably this month. But with the war in Ukraine and its consequences uh, to the European economy, that will not come as a surprise. In any case, we still see the path of least resistance for the euro as being to the downside. Eurozone's industrial production is forecast to have slowed to 0.2% month over month in January after expanding 1.2% in December. Now on Wednesday, the main item on the agenda is the FOMC interest rate decision. With Fed uh, Chair Jerome Powell saying uh, when testifying before Congress that he will support a 25 basis points hike at this gathering, such a move is fully priced in. Thus, in our view, a quarter point hike by itself is unlikely to prove a major market mover. We believe that investors will quickly turn their attention to the accompanying statement, the updated economic projections, and especially the new dot plot. Remember that when testifying, Powell also said that he is ready to use larger or more frequent rate hikes if inflation doesn't slow, with last week's CPI data revealing further acceleration in both headline and underlying inflation. So, with market participants now pricing in around 6.5 quarter point hikes by the end of the year, it will be interesting to see how many hikes will the dot plot point to. Anything less than what uh, the market currently suggests could disappoint and perhaps result in a setback in the US dollar, while equities are likely to rebound. But in, li in line with our broader uh, view, we will uh, still treat such a bounce as a corrective, um, as a corrective phase. In order to get confident on a long-lasting recovery in equities, we would like to see a resolution in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Now, for the US dollar to continue marching higher, we would like to see officials matching or exceeding market expectations. But we see something like that as a hard case, especially if we take into account that the December dot plot pointed to only three rate increases for 2022. So, it will be a hard task for officials to bring, uh, to double those, uh, those estimates. Now, as for Wednesday's data, Canada CPIs for February are also on the agenda, with the headline rate expected to have risen further to 5.5% from 5.1%, uh, and no forecast available for the core rate at the moment. At their latest gathering, Bank of Canada policymakers hiked by, 20, by 25 basis points, as it was widely anticipated. And while they acknowledged the uncertainty surrounding, the Russia's, uh, surrounding Russia's invasion in Ukraine, they added that rising commodity prices would fuel further inflation and that growth for the first quarter of 2022 now looks more solid than previously projected. This may have encouraged loony traders to add to their bets with regards to future rate hikes by this bank, and accelerating inflation is likely to allow them to add some more, and thereby uh, buy more Canadian dollars, buy more loonies. Now, as for the rest of Wednesday's events, during the Asian session, we get New Zealand's current account balance for the fourth quarter and Japan's trade data for, for February. Later, during the U.S. session, ahead of the FOMC decision, we have the U.S. retail sales for February. Both headline and core sales are forecast to have slowed to 0.4% month over month and 1% month over month from 4.8% and 3.3% respectively. Now, on Thursday, the, the central bank uh, torch will be, will be passed to the, to the Bank of England. When they last met, officials of this bank voted 5 to 4 for a hike by 25 basis points, with the four dissenters calling for a 50 basis points increase. So that's the important thing here, that we have a 5 to 4 vote, with four dissenters calling for a, for a double hike. Since then, 
we've been highlighting that only one member needed to be convinced uh, for that to happen uh, at this gathering, at the next gathering. And accelerating CPIs for January did added to speculation on that front. However, this was the case around a week before Russia invaded Ukraine. With the events unfolding since then, market-wise raising concerns over the global economic performance and especially in Europe, something evident by the tumbles in the euro and the pound. Thus, with all that in mind, we don't believe that the Bank of England will now stay willing to hike by 50 basis points uh, this week. According to the UK overnight index swaps forward curve, market participants believe that a quarter point hike will be delivered. Therefore, if this is the case, we will be eager to see the bank's assessment on the war in Ukraine and how this is affecting their future course of action. Similarly, to the Fed, similarly with the Fed, investors expect the Bank of England to deliver around six quarter point hikes by the end of the year. And will be, it will be interesting to see whether officials' view and language will match those expectations. Now, as uh, for Thursday's data, during the Asian session ahead of uh, the Bank of England decision, Australia releases its employment report for February. The unemployment rate, uh, the unemployment rate is expected to have ticked down to 4.1% uh, from 4.2%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added 30, 37,000 jobs after adding 12.9 thousand in January. Now I view these numbers point to a decent report, which may allow market participants to keep uh, their RPA hike bets elevated and thereby support the Aussie at the time of the release. Later in the day, Eurozone's final CPIs for February are coming out, and as it is usually the case, they are expected to confirm their, prelim their pre pre excuse me, preliminary estimates. While from the US, we have the housing starts for the month, which are forecast to have increased somewhat. Now, finally, on Friday, during the Asian session, we have another major, another major central bank deciding on monetary policy, and this is the Bank of Japan. However, with Japanese inflation still running well behind the rest of the world, we don't expect any material changes. Once again, any reaction to the yen is likely to be small. Japan's CPIs for February are also coming out, with the core rate expected to, to inch up to 0.6% confirming the aforementioned statement that uh, Japan infl and Japanese inflation is uh, at much lower levels than uh, the rest of uh, the world. Now, from New Zealand, we get the GDP data for the fourth quarter, with the quarter-over-quarter quarter rate expected to have rebounded to 3.4% from minus 4.7%, something that will take the year-over-year -year, uh, rate up to 3.3% from minus 0.3%. At its latest gathering, the RBNZ lifted interest rates by another 25 basis points to 1% and also steepened its uh, rate path projections. So with uh, that in mind, the rebound in economic activity during the last uh, quarter of 2021 may add credence to officials' view and perhaps encourage Kiwi traders to add to their uh, long positions. Now later in the day, Canada's retail, uh, retail sales for January are due to be released. Headline sales are forecast to have rebounded 2.4% month over month after sliding 1.8% in December, but core sales are anticipated to have continued sliding, albeit at a slower pace. Specifically, the forecast points to a 2% month over month slide after a 2.5% fall during the previous month. So, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around uh, 9 o'clock a.m. GMT. So, goodbye. Have a great day and a greater rest of uh, the week. JFT, just fair and direct.